all you flight simmers out there, Commander Kingfish here, and I am back in Air Hauler 2 with an update on how the company is going, C CKF Expeditors. And uh, if we, uh, if you remember in the last episode, uh, we actually made our first cargo run and really kind of got the company started and, and off and going. And today I wanted to cover quite a few things things that I had uh, encountered as I have uh, been uh, playing along. The first thing I want to mention is that when you're taking these cargo jobs, it's all real time. So if you take a cargo job with, it says it has 12 hours to deliver, uh, you literally only have 12 hours and that's not game time hours. So be cautious of that. Uh, the way of uh, what I do when I'm pulling out flights is uh, I will go to my cargo jobs and I'll look at to what's available and like this one here from my home base of Chehalis KCLS to uh, Oregon 66 which is uh, that is Beaver Oaks Escadia uh, I will uh, actually go into the flight simulator before I even accept that job and uh, uh, check it out, check the airport out, make sure I can find it. Uh, some of these small airports are very difficult to find when you're coming in if you're just, if you're not checking it out and you don't know exactly where it is. Uh, sometimes you have to make multiple trips. Uh, depending on the size of the aircraft, like this is uh, 784 uh, quali quantity uh, pounds wise, that's a little too much for the uh, 172. So what I like to do is look for uh, uh, jobs that uh, have uh, return trips. So like this one does have a return trip of beef coming back to KCLS. So I can split this trip up into two different trips. And actually, it also has an additional one here. So if you look here, down here, it's uh, aircraft parts, and you have a little bit longer to deliver that. So what I would do is take this job. I would start this job. I wouldn't take the others until uh, I at least made my first leg on this. And then I would, uh, once I've got landed, then I would accept this and then fly back with the parts and then uh, pick these up and then fly down and complete the uh, deliveries. So think of uh, multiple trips, multiple cargo orders uh, uh, in respects to stuff like that and then how you do your return trips. Uh, one of the things now on aircraft and uh, do your, when you have repairs to do, so if we go over here to the company ledger and if we look at over here under the ledger, you'll see I've been doing a lot of flying because frankly, uh, it's a lot of grinding. So I'm, I don't think you're interested in seeing every single flight that I do. So this is where we started with the type, uh, type rating test on the C-172. Uh, so if we scroll up, you'll start to see where uh, I had uh, uh, to do some repairs on the, the maintenance. Now, typically, when you hear a siren sound when you're flying, that means Air Hauler has created some sort of uh, broken part and that you'll have to get repaired. Now, typically on those broken parts, you can fly, finish your uh, delivery and get back to your base and uh, do uh, your repairs at your base because you are going to get a pretty substantial discount. Now, I went ahead and just repaired this one at CYBL, so I didn't get any discount on this. But if you look at this one right here, this repairs for the Cessna. I did that at KCLS, uh, the home base. That was a $15,000 repair, uh, but I saved $4,500 on doing the repair at my home base. So it is uh, to try to be able to get your discounts. Uh, try to do all your repairs and all your maintenance jobs at uh, at your home base. The other 
thing that you want to try to do if you can. Now, sometimes you can't and you've got to do it, but you have your 50 hour maintenance. So if we go over here and look at our fleet and you'll notice I also had purchased one, uh, but you'll see that there's a hours to A check, hours to B check, hours to C check. Again, you can get a discount on uh, uh, your a check on your just your regular maintenance and if we go back to the ledger uh let's see on the 172 i actually had the 50 hour maintenance come up and where is it at uh should be right down uh where are you at Right here, uh, the 50-hour check that was $721 for to do that. So again, uh, maintenance uh, can be expensive. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, and I don't know if you're aware of it, but uh, uh, reputation uh, that's important as you are getting wanting to get more flights and you can see I've been focused on cargo and so I've done a lot of flights and so I keep increasing my reputation uh, I'm up to 77.2 on the cargo uh, which that uh, has an effect on your overall so uh, cargo will slowly uh, bring your overall reputation up which I'm focused on cargo but if you're doing both missions and uh, passenger uh, runs, then that reputation will go up and that will also add up on your reputation. Uh, let's see, uh, let's go back. Uh, so another thing that I ran into and you might end up having this happen. Uh, let's scroll down here. I accepted a job uh, to deliver. Let's find it down here. Uh, it shouldn't be too far, right here. Okay. So I accepted this job of uh, delivering cabbages, I believe is what it was. And I had to, so, no problem. Uh, that's one of the reasons I started checking airports out ahead of time before I accept the job. I went to go to set up my flight for the delivery and Microsoft didn't have the airport anywhere. I couldn't fly to that airport. And I even checked offline and I couldn't find that airport being uh, accounted for anywhere. Now, I believe it was on one of the uh, First Nations reservations. And so maybe that's why Microsoft didn't have it. Uh, I'm just not sure. So as opposed to canceling the job and damaging reputation, uh, you have another option. And so what I did was uh, I landed in the nearest airport uh, which in this case was Yakima and then had overland transport. It still was going to get there in time to meet the deadline for the delivery. And so, but it did cost $1,218. So that's something that's just an alternative that if you get somewhere, uh, you can have uh, your goods. If you get at the wrong airport somehow and you can't actually find it, then land at an airport that you can find. And if you've got plenty of time, you're gonna be able to do overland transport. Now, I did have a second problem with that. And if we go up here, I made a delivery of flowers to S43. Uh, and problem is I actually landed at the airport. I landed at S43 and no matter where I parked, it still kept saying that I wasn't at my airport. Now, uh, again, the overland transport fee, but it was zero dollars. 
so I didn't lose anything on it. I think there was another airport somehow that was influencing uh, how close, and so it's reading what airport you're at. So again, just something to be aware of. Sometimes that happens. I've had that happen once before when I was playing in uh, uh, FSX, and uh, I couldn't finally get to the right spot. So that's uh, some of the things that you might want to watch out for uh, with the uh, using overland transport, and it's a viable option as well. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, I had a question that came up on the uh, on one of the videos that I had, and it was how to import uh, custom aircraft. And so if you go over to the management, there's a uh, airport management, custom airports. You have the ability of being able to import those in. I've never worried about airports or custom airports, but my aircraft, I've had to do that. And so uh, all of these I have down below down here on the lower uh, left hand side these I've all had to import because when I loaded it it didn't pick it up and it even not all of the aircraft out of uh, the flight simulator part of that is due that uh, some of the third parties and stuff like that it, uh, a lot of the aircraft in flight simulator is encrypted so the uh, air hauler is not able to read that encryption but fortunately there is a way of doing that so if you go over here where it says import aircraft and if you click that uh, it's going to bring up a list now some of your some of the stuff might be on here that you can import from from the list and you could easily do that uh, like if I wanted to at some point I wanted to bring the skis in uh, stuff like that I could import that in right from here I would just click on click on that and then it would import it because it's reading those uh, if it's if your uh, uh, plane or your uh, aircraft is not here on the list then you can either import from a specific location as long as you know where the path is and then you can go there uh, or if it's actually an encrypted one, then you can import via the SIM connect. So you would click on that. And then what you would do is get over into the plane in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and actually just any any base, any, any airport, uh, set up a uh, flight and set up the aircraft that you want imported and then uh, you actually get into the cockpit of it. And then once you're into the cockpit and you're sitting there and the, uh, sitting at the uh, uh, airport itself, uh, you would click OK and then just follow the on order. Now I have one that I want to do. So I saved it. So I'm gonna hop over into the flight simulator and get into the cockpit and so I'll show you what I'm what uh, how I do that and so uh, yeah I'll see you over in the flight simulator and then we'll hop back over and do air hauler okay I'm over here into the flight simulator so if we click on profile and I do it this way but however you want to do it you could actually go in right into the actually let's do it that way you could actually go right here into the world uh, map and where you would set up your flight plan, uh, grab a uh, grab a airport, and then click on and change your aircraft out. And the one I wanted to bring in is this uh, uh, De Havilland uh, Beaver Amphibious. So I've already imported the uh, uh, land-based one. Uh, so if we click this. And then we get into our cockpit. And then so if we click fly, uh, it's going to set up.
And once we are there, uh, takes a few minutes, obviously, with the load screens. Kilo Charlie Lima Sierra, traffic de Havilland, November Niner Tree Echo, taking off runway tree four straight out departure. So as you can see, I am sitting here in the de Havilland, and if we uh, uh, go outside the cockpit, you can see I am on the floats, and so that's the uh, uh, plane that I want to import. So, uh, so now I'll see you back over into air hauler and I'll show you what you have to do over there okay I am back over into air hauler as you can see we are still here so now I am sitting in the cockpit so I press OK and so now it's gonna connect and then you click transfer the data and it pulls all of the data in the one thing that you want to make sure is that when it pulls it in that you always have your passengers uh, in there. Sometimes uh, I've imported it in and it'll put zero for passengers. And as far as air haulers concerned, you need to have some passengers in there. So that's just something to be aware of. So at this point, we're connected. We've transferred the data and we can uh, click OK. And it says aircraft imported successfully. And then you can click Okay, there, and when we close this out, and if we scroll down, you'll see that it's this one right here that uh, I uh, just imported, and it should say the floats right there, floats N93E. All right. Uh, so give me just a second. I'm going to hop back over into the simulator and get out of the uh, flight there and I'll be back in just a second all right I am back I've gotten out of the uh, uh, aircraft over there so that's how you import uh, an aircraft next thing I wanted to cover today so again I don't know if I'll actually get to a flight I was going to but we're already running uh, about 18 20 minutes so I think this might be a good video just to kind of show you everything that I have uh, accomplished and some of the things that you can do but uh, so one of the things that I like to do is if you go over here to the marketplace which is right up here and you've got aircraft sales which you could buy a, a new aircraft and here's all the list or you can actually lease an aircraft if you're uh, making lots of money I have never leased one I just I don't believe in that stuff real life. I'm not going to do it in game as well. So that's just just me. Uh, but that's always an option of being able to, to get planes that you want. Now, the other option, which I really like to do, is if you come up here and go to, uh, let's see, let's go back into the marketplace. And I like to go into the private sales. So here you have a list of planes that are for sale that you can uh, pick up. And I always look for planes that are 60% or less, like this one right here. Now I ended up buying a plane, uh, which was right at 60%, just so I could get it delivered. But once you buy an aircraft and in the next episode, I might have enough money made and if there's a good deal out there I'll actually go through the process of actually buying it but you would click on there and then you could got a button right down here in the lower left that says buy the aircraft so if you clicked on that and it says are you sure you want to purchase this and I'm just gonna click no for now because I don't want to purchase this one just yet uh, but that so you would get that then you would have a series of questions to go through do you want to pick the plane up wherever it's at? Do you want to have it delivered? I typically always have them delivered to my base uh, just because you would have to try to fly there and trying to get there to pick it up. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other challenges involved in that. Uh, you'd have to get an uh, airplane ticket to fly there to, to land and pick this up. The other thing too that I look for is where is this coming from? So like this aircraft here 
is where in the hell is it at it looks like it's off over into uh yeah that's australia so this is all off over in indonesia ah, all right let's click on a different one uh this one is off over africa so you want to look to see where your plane's coming from because that depends on how long it will take to get there uh if we look at this coronado uh this is one over in minneapolis now this would be a good plane especially if it was down around 50 percent uh the other thing too is it's already configured for cargo so you already have a configuration the one that i bought was already configured for cargo uh, but you would have that option of paying to have it uh converted over to passenger or cargo uh but uh so that would be a good one to look at purchasing because once it gets down to around 50 percent that's going to be somewhere around another hundred thousand dollars off of that aircraft and you can see it's got a pretty nice cargo cap and i actually like flying that particular plane uh i've flown it a lot and so it's, it's a pretty good one to fly uh so that's buying an aircraft so once you buy it now if we go over to our company information and we go over to our fleet uh i had to wait what was it uh a day and a half or two days for this to get delivered it was coming from someplace like up in wisconsin now i purchased this one for just as much for a show and as much as I wanted to get another pilot going, uh, so I wanted to get a plane bought and have it sitting at the base so that uh, when I did the next update, I could show you where we were at on that, uh, on what to do with it. So in this case, it was at 60%, and I think you need to be at least 70% for the to fly the aircraft. Uh, so uh what i'm going to do is well first off it was at 66 percent condition so it and this one is already set up for cargo so i didn't have to worry about upgrading that and it was at uh 53,789 is what the purchase price was for the jabiru the a new price is 89,648 so that's a considerable savings right there now, if we go to, let's go to repair this. Uh, so if we click repair, uh, we want to bring this up to full repair to 100%. We're at our base. So our total cost to repair this is only going to be $3,700. So you add that on to the uh, 53,000 that we got. So we're looking at uh really only about a uh, 56 57 thousand dollar aircraft for it to be brand new or in full 100 percent condition so let's go ahead and carry out the repairs uh yes i want to do that now we have an aircraft that's fully 100 percent condition and it uh saved us about oh what about 30 $35,000 in uh, purchase price. So I've always gone with the used aircraft. I always keep a close eye on the uh, secondhand market, especially once I have money built up and I can use that aircraft for uh, adding another AI pilot on it. So, uh, so, let's flip over to the last thing i wanted to cover and uh, we're already up to 25 minutes so uh chances are i'm not going to get to get a flight in today but that's okay uh i was just going to be flying down to uh oregon and back and just delivering so that's not a big deal i think it's more important to show you guys what this is all about all right so now back over to the marketplace and if we look at crew so now you have a whole list of crew members let's refresh this and let's 
let's see what we got here. Just a quick scan. Uh, okay. So if we start with uh, Sophia Henderson here, uh, she's the first officer and her monthly salary is just a little under $10,000. And it gives a little brief little bio here. The more important thing that you want to look at is what she's already rated for. And so in this case, she's not rated for the Jabberoo. And then there's also a view skills because one of the things that as these pilots that you hire, as they continue to gain experience, they'll get uh, uh, points to spend. And so you can kind of see uh, what type of, uh, what kind of bonuses they get. So like uh, Sophia has faster cargo loading. That's the other thing on their pilots. Now, when you're flying and you're landing, you're immediately unloading and ready to go again. So it takes you a minute or two to, to get unloaded. With your AI pilots, it can take as much as a half hour uh, for them to unload. So that's something you need to build into when you're at giving them cargo runs and giving them you want to you want to make sure you manage their time on there now you can really go to the complete details of actually loading their plane for them and uh they will if you do it quick enough sometimes i've done that in the past and they still ended up loading it even though i loaded the plane for them. uh the other thing is in how you assign jobs to them uh, a lot of times i just make sure they have plenty of time sometimes they have to make a couple of trips and you might get a little frustrated you'll see them delivering a they might have have 10 pounds that they didn't put on their plane and so that's one thing that if you think it's going to be close keep an eye on it and make sure that that plane's loaded uh and uh just kind of watch that so these are the various uh they can buy fuel cheaper uh repairs are cheaper uh sometimes they have uh, a little rough in handling the uh crates uh or you know uh your plane and so uh uh they can fly a little longer with a lower condition before it has to be repaired and that's the other thing too when you do your maintenance on your plane it's immediate uh for the AI pilots, it will take as much as uh, 24 hours. So again, that's just something to be aware of and you need to keep an eye on uh, their maintenance as you're assigning them jobs. The other thing too is uh, they can uh, uh, lower in-flight cargo damage. And the other thing too is as you get enough credits uh, skill points, uh, they can get uh, uh, skill points into higher cargo job payments. So in other words, you might be 5,000, but if you've got a pilot that has some of these uh, skill points, they can uh, actually increase uh, that from 5,000 to $5,700 for payment on that. So that's what uh, we want to look at here. So that's just looking at the skill tree. So if we go down to, let's say, Justin. Uh, he doesn't have the aircraft. He'll have to take a check ride. And so that means that he'll, uh, another 12 hours, I think, is what uh, it takes for uh, them to get trained on a particular aircraft. So you can assign it to them and then have them get trained. And then once they're ready to go, they're ready to go. Uh, I'm not going to, once I hire a pilot, I'm not going to assign him to the plane just yet uh, because I want to, well, I can assign him to the plane and then unassign him. And I haven't done that yet in this time around. So I might be a little rusty on that. Uh, but let's look at uh, Tilly here and see what she has. Uh, nothing here. 
uh, maintenance, uh, a little bit of uh, cheaper repairs, uh, a little faster loading. That's always good. Uh, let's go back to our buddy Justin here. Let's see what his skills are. A little cheaper. He doesn't have much in the way of skills, so which is fine. We can build him up. You're, uh, he's a lot cheaper. Uh, let's see if there's somebody else here that I might be interested in. Uh, we looked at Tilly. Let's check Alexander. He doesn't have the ratings. Let's see what he's got for skills. Faster loading. He's not bad. Uh, and so... Uh, His uh, MTOW limit is 100,000, so he's got quite a bit of uh, ratings already. So if you find a plane that uh, he's capable of flying, uh, you could just assign him right away. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, let's check Sarah out. Uh, she doesn't have the plane that we currently have so she'll need training uh i tend to stay away from pilots that have experience over here under the the passengers just because i don't uh i'm not uh flying passenger service i may eventually but for now i'm not doing that so uh time slots which means they are a little faster flying to where they need to go uh let's check out katie here uh she has the c120 let's view her skills uh packs uh slot times relax that's good uh how about nicole skills he's kind of got uh, and then uh, the last one Benjamin he doesn't have our aircraft uh, I think the best one that kind of looked if we go back up here where was he uh, was it Justin Justin had some skills uh, not too much slot times relaxed uh, so as you're getting skill points you can add them into here uh, so we'll take a chance on Justin uh, let's uh, go ahead and hire this pilot and there's a button right down here in the lower left hand corner it's going to ask us hire the pilot and we say yes or okay uh and it's gonna we want him to report to kcls and so we'll use that and we just hired our first pilot and we get the uh attaboy sounds on there so that pilot is hired now oh and i got a uh, achievement uh, I hired a pilot, and actually if we go to our, let's see, company information, if we go to personal, while we're at it here, uh, if we look at the achievements, I've, that's the one I just got right there, uh, and then I've completed a cargo job, and I've made, uh, bought my first aircraft, and I've started a new company, so those are the achievements that I've got, uh, probably be the next one will be uh, once I start getting up into some of these uh, amount of money earned I'll start hitting some of these uh, at some point I'll have some of these achievements uh, but probably the next one there was one where completed 100 cargo jobs I don't know if I'll get that one first or if I'll have a fleet of five aircraft but uh, I'm certainly on the road to uh, getting 100 cargo jobs. All right, so that's achievements. 
And while we're here, you can also get a list of all the airports that you've visited. As you can see, I've been busy since I've started this. I've uh, visited 34 different airports and obviously my home base, I've been in and out of there the most. Uh, you also have a flight log that shows what your flight log, just like you do over in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And obviously all of my flights have been with the C-172. It shows you what type of uh, landings you have had, uh, if you've had any landing damage. Fortunately, I have not. Everything's been good so far. And then it shows you the type of landings. I had a, a couple of them uh, landing into some really short runways that I've kind of had to set it down. So I ended up with just an okay uh, landing. So there's been a few of those, but I usually like to try to keep it smooth or greaser type landing. Uh, no personal fleet and no personal finance. I haven't put any money over into there. Once you've get enough money coming in, you can start building up your own personal fleet. So if we go back to our fleet, now I think in order to uh, fly this aircraft, I just need to tell it to position this aircraft with the AI and I can put ACLS to Halus where it's already at. I used the selected and then, oh, you know what? I got to cancel this because this pilot does not have the rank. Uh, so I've got to go to this pilot and let's, uh, Pilots available, uh, company information, pilots. Uh, let's uh, get a type rating, type rating training. I have two choices. I either have the C-172 or the Javaru. He's gonna get assigned to that. So that'll cost $153 and we click okay. Now he's in training for the, the Javaru. So it'll show that he's training, what his status is and stuff like that. When he's actually flying, you're going to see him uh, where whatever his status is. So, uh, all right. And let's go back to the company information uh actually the final thing i kind of wanted to show you was the finance so you can see on the chart here uh we have managed to build up some company cash and that's even purchasing an aircraft uh, we started at two hundred and fifty thousand, uh right here uh $250,000 plus the aircraft and plus a base. So uh, we're doing pretty good. And then the graph kind of shows you where we were at. Uh, we were at uh, $387,000, uh, but then I made the purchase, so that dropped us down. So, which isn't bad. And then you've also got a little graph over here that shows expenditures and income and stuff like that so uh that was everything that i had on my list that i wanted to cover in specific to air hauler today uh and then the last thing was to do a cargo run but we're already 40 minutes into the video and i've already covered an awful lot so hopefully this information is going to be very beneficial for you guys and uh, that uh, it uh, will help you in uh, uh, playing air hauler. Next video, I hope to actually buy a new aircraft from start to finish, and I hope to have enough money build up to open up a new base. Now, bases are expensive, but I'll go into all of that detail in the next video on how you can kind of search for your bases 
uh, some of the criteria where you have to have either an AI pilot there or you have to be at that base or at that airport in order to open up a new base. And then it takes a while for them to build that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, at that point, I'll go into more detail about uh, the AI pilot and their duties and how you kind of handle them. We'll have, uh, uh, we will have our pilot, Justin, uh, flying and getting uh, uh, things to do. And, uh, oh, while we're here, he has a skill point that we can assign. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and assign that skill point while he's here. I think uh, actually uh, faster cargo loading is a good one to start with. So let's go ahead and just, uh, let's go ahead and add that skill point. And then we can click OK. And there we go. He's uh, already got a, a new skill. OK, well, uh, if you all like this video, please hit that thumbs up because it really helps out the video. And uh, uh, please subscribe. That will really help the channel out a lot. And ring that bell. Uh, that will let you know when I am uploading new videos and I'm always trying to upload videos on a weekly basis. Okay, all you flight simmers out there, uh, keep flying away, keep those smooth landings coming. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone.